Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. On December the 8th, the Drone Pilot Association of Canada's Steering Committee met with Transport Canada for our quarterly discussion. This meeting was primarily an opportunity for TC to respond to various suggestions and proposals we had made at our last meeting. So let's see how it went. The Drone Pilot Association of Canada, or DPAC, represents recreational and small commercial drone operators by promoting safety and a reasonable regulatory environment in Canada. There's a link in the description below this video to our website where you can learn more about us, check out our resources, and join the organization. It's totally free. 1,481 members at this point. The meeting on December the 8th was our third quarterly meeting with Transport Canada, and we had a packed agenda. Our representatives were Steve Bannister, Steve Bogner, Mike Hill, Nick Seamel, and myself. Transport Canada was represented by three members of the ARPAS task force, Jeremy Fountain, Sylvain Bourque, and the new training and exam leader, Mark Vanderregen. I'll share what is perhaps the most important news item coming from the meeting first. Do you remember the proposal for regulatory changes Transport Canada announced way back in April of 2020? Well, it sounds like it will soon be formally released. That proposal was quite complex, and I covered it in a few videos at the time. In a nutshell, they proposed four things. First, the good news. The allowance for advanced pilots to fly certain kinds of operations just out of visual line of sight, such as behind a building or beyond trees. They called it localized BVLOS. Then they proposed a number of new regulations to cover more extreme cases of flying beyond visual line of sight called low-risk BVLOS operations. Somewhat tied into this, they also introduced a higher level of pilot certification above and beyond the current advanced level. Now, these last two proposals taken together provide a regulatory framework to support routine commercial drone operations by larger companies. Things like pipeline inspections or cargo flights to remote communities without the need for repeated cumbersome SFOC applications. And the final fourth part of this proposal was a series of new or increased fees ranging from drone registration fee bumps to new fees for SFOC applications and fees related to the new certification level. So the news from the meeting was that these new regulations and all the supporting standards and documentation are now complete. Hopefully, hopefully having taken into account feedback that we provided in 2021. And we can expect an official announcement at some point in early 2023. The first step will be a publication in what is called the Canada Gazette with a timeline for public feedback. Comments will then be processed, adjustments will possibly be made, and then another announcement will be made with the final regulations in a second Canada Gazette publication. The effective date will also be announced at that point. I'll keep you guys posted on this process, particularly for that feedback period. Now, not only is this news important and interesting, but it also sets the backdrop for understanding some of the delay in implementing other changes to the rules and exams. Well, the BVLOS changes are all slowly pushing their way forwards towards implementation, things like the exam knowledge requirements are effectively frozen. Once the new regs are announced, then the books can be reopened for potential changes. And leading up to that, Jeremy indicated that stakeholders would be consulted, including very likely DPAC. So yes, I'm hoping recreational and small commercial drone pilots will finally be at the table. If this is sounding slow and tedious, well it is, but it's the reality of government. There are a lot of stakeholders and lots of moving parts, and it takes time to progress. I'm not defending that, it's just the way it is. Fortunately, not everything is bound up in the regulatory process. We heard at the meeting about the results of their scrubbing of the exam question pool. This was already in process back in September when I presented our analysis of the knowledge requirements. And apparently TC went back and cross-checked their work 
which was based on looking at questions that people seem to struggle with, and they compared that with the DPAC presentation of the worst knowledge requirements. And no surprise, there was a lot of overlap. In the end, they reworked 30 questions and completely removed another 90 out of the pool of perhaps a thousand or more questions. And this has already been executed. So if you take the exam today, you will not be asked how long you should wait to fly your drone after scuba diving. Yeah, that was the example they used. They also removed questions related to complex aerodynamic maneuvers, some stuff about oxygen requirements, atmospheric composition, some parts of chart reading that drone pilots really shouldn't need to know, and some complicated airspace resolution questions. Now, the exams still cover a vast amount of material, but it sounds like the number of times you yell out, what the f should be somewhat reduced. More work ahead, but a step in the right direction. They also indicated they were seriously considering a learn and test approach to either replace or augment the current method of simply having exams. This corresponds to DPAC's basic pilot safety program initiative we shared in September. It's encouraging, but it sounded like it will be well off into the future. On another front, we continued the discussion of aviation radio usage. As you know, the AIM document has encouraged us to listen on airport frequencies as an additional safety measure, and under certain circumstances to initiate radio calls. To use an aviation radio band transceiver in Canada, you need both a Rock A operator's certificate and a base station license for the radio itself. And Industry Canada, properly known as I said, has actually refused to grant base station licenses to drone operators. Now, this is quite a struggle between these two government organizations. Well, the problem is still not resolved after months of meetings, but TC has put forward a formal request to either exempt drone operators from requiring a base station license, just like radios in manned aircraft are exempt, or for ISED to change their policy. Stay tuned, but not on an aviation frequency, for an update in the new year. One other topic that was on our agenda was drone pilot reciprocity internationally. A couple of people had asked me about that, so I brought it up at the meeting. And apparently there have been discussions on this topic, particularly with the American FAA organization. Obviously, this is not going to be easy, given the differences in both the regulations and certifications, even between the U.S. and Canada. But again, stay tuned, and there may be some news on this topic at some point in the future. So, it was a good meeting, with great participation from everyone. Hey, the very fact that we're having a dialogue with Transport Canada is great, and I'm looking forward to our next meeting. Sure, progress is slow, but there is noticeable progress, and that is encouraging. And DPAC is making a difference here as a unified voice of recreational and small commercial drone operators, with perspectives and interests quite different in many ways from the larger commercial drone outfits. That's a good thing. And it's clear Transport Canada recognizes this. If you haven't already joined DPAC, consider signing up today. It's totally free. The website is right there and in the description below this video. Each and every membership gives us a stronger mandate and continued respect from Transport Canada. Feel free to comment or ask questions below. Thanks for watching. Safe and happy flying.